Good evening, folks. What's going on? It is the Earthmaster here on this uh, Friday evening, about uh, 10.50 p.m., September 3rd, 2021's the date. The latest quake, a 5.0 earthquake striking down here around New Zealand. Pretty shallow earthquake. Let's go ahead and check out some specifics here about what's going on here in New Zealand area. Get this thing to pop up here. Just kind of been acting a little crazy tonight. Uh, it'd probably help if I hit the right window. There we go. So we got a uh, 5.0 uh, in the New Zealand area. Pretty uh, active area for a historical earthquake um, movement. What do we got? Uh, about 11 kilometers for the depth. A few folks reported filling it out there in the. Uh, New, Ze New Zealand area. One thing that kind of bugs me is it's within that location. Let's go ahead and check out here on this other map of the Hikarangi subduction zone. Not really a uh, deep earthquake, really shallow, but this area right here along the uh, Hikarangi subduction zone, very capable of producing a significant size earthquake. Would not want to see something like that pop off here around the New Zealand area. This earthquake uh, just occurring. Uh, what do we got there? 0454. So it looks like about an hour ago. Uh, within an hour. I believe, right? 0454. That's UTC time. So Hawaii also kicking up. A lot of movement uh, taking place along the Pacific Plate today. Uh, including, uh, like I said, quite a bit of movement in the Hawaii area. See all these quakes here within the last hours. Watching some earthquake activity on the live seismograph station as well uh, around the Kilauea volcano area. Never. Hopefully you guys can't hear my, hear my bird. He's he's partying it up on a Friday night. He's just kind of being noisy, having a party by himself in there. Uh, so yeah, Kilauea volcano showing a little bit of heightened earthquake activity, volcanic earth uh, volcanic activity, just south of the um, Kilauea crater area. Nothing major, but it's definitely an increase from what we've seen last night. Quite a few earthquakes here within the last hour. Something to keep an eye on for sure. But uh, definitely uh, watching this region pretty closely, folks. I'm watching this area very closely. Uh, the rest of the globe up here along the uh, Japan Trench, pretty quiet. We did see some further movement, uh, deeper earthquake activity way earlier this morning. Uh, 5.8 just off the uh, uh, just off the coast of Russia it looks like well beyond the uh, trench region right here that earthquake is 581 kilometers for that 5.8 in here we did see uh, another earthquake up here into the sea uh, yeah it was last night off that 24-hour threshold uh, not quite as big and not quite as deep but definitely some deep movement taking place uh, within that region uh, shooting over here towards China a little bit of movement out there in China area as well 4.9 10 kilometers below the surface and a pair of earthquakes up here in this part of China uh, 4.7 and a 4.6 taking place in that area Mediterranean Sea looking pretty quiet through the region as well as the uh, Africa continent. Some movement around the South Sandwich Islands once again, a 5.7 being the largest quake in the continued earthquake activity so far in the South Sandwich Islands area. 13 kilometers and some variable depths there for the earthquakes that are taking place over the past few days. Still keeping an eye on that region as well. South America very absolutely stunningly quiet. Uh, this is not a good sign here, I believe. No movement at all along the Peru-Chile Trench. Nothing. No deep movement. No shallow earthquake activity into uh, Mexico as well. Puerto Rico, still seeing some activity just southwest of the area uh, of the uh, Puerto Rico region. Little earthquake activity up here near the trench. 3.4, 24 kilometers. Let's go ahead and check out the west coast where we're seeing earthquake activity kind of ramping up. Along the Cascadia subduction zone, once again, 
uh, pretty deep earthquake in that region. Also uh, 2.6, a little bit further shallower uh, at 11 kilometers just to the west there. Over here around the coastal ranges, some further deep movement, uh, 2.3 near Weaverville, 38 kilometers below surface. I'm guessing uh, that's going to be a subduction zone quake. I haven't seen the tremor map yet, but I'm guessing that we're going to see an increase uh, on that map. Uh, we're also seeing some further movement up here around Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier. Nothing significant, but definitely a, a little bit of further movement in the earthquake department for those areas. Not for sure what's going on here around Lake Oroville. A little uh, quarry blast it looks like just north of Oroville. Some further movement into the coastal ranges as well as uh, uh, the geyser area. It looks like getting in on some uh, earthquake activity as well. A line of activity here near the San Jose area along the Calaveras fault zone and also around the Greenville fault zone up here just south of Livermore 2.5 occurring uh, up around that area. Some movement along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. But looking down here to the south we're kind of seeing a little increase in earthquake activity aside from the uh, Antelope Valley zone uh, still seeing some movement there and also along the uh, Long Valley Super Volcano folks. Look at that. Check out all that movement. About 28 Earthquake. Well, what do we got? Where'd the 28 go? Okay, probably about 15. That's a big difference, right? 15, 28. Either way, a lot of cluster of quakes right around the Long Valley Super Volcano. Uh, it's kind of within this area right here is the caldera. Um, let's see what we got here. Can't really tell if this is on a specific fault zone or not. Uh, Hilton Creek Fault, it looks like. But this movement up here in the uh, mountains kind of pretty small some small quakes but uh, yeah, it looks like about two to three kilometers below surface for some of that earthquake activity might want to keep an eye on this region as well of course Long Valley super volcano a major threat uh, for this region uh, some further large-scale uh, not large-scale but def definitely a uh, higher uh, multitude of quakes out here around the Tonopah area today over the last 24 hours, you can see that linear of activity stretching over towards the uh, Candelaria Hills. This region right here still rumbling a year later following that earthquake activity out there last year. Ridgecrest movement as well kicking up and some activity taking place along the Garlock Fault Structure 1.4. And looks like another small microquake there in that region. So heightened increase activity along the west coast for sure. Um, Los Angeles over here, 1.9 near Inglewood. Inglewood in the house, 7.5 kilometers below surface for that one. And a little bit of swarming out here. Uh, looks like uh, quite a bit of swarming kicking up just off of the San Jacinto Fault area. San Andreas Fault System sits over here. Not a whole lot of movement on it right now, but we're definitely getting a seismic increase in pressure here from the west into the Southern California region. A little bit of further movement through the Brawley seismic zone, uh, also stretching down into the Imperial Fault here of Southern California. Earthquakes stretching all the way up from the Intermountain West all the way up into Montana, where it looks like Yellowstone just had a 2.9 earthquake. Wow, okay. Let's see what this thing looks like on the seismograph here real quick. Uh, let's see here. Hold on one second here, folks. It's coming up around the bin. We've got Petrolia. Okay, there it is. That is the 2.9 hitting Yellowstone. Well defined on that station right there. We're starting to see uh, Yellowstone jump up. Let's go ahead and check out the... Uh, the Yellowstone, well, first let me see where this is at exactly. North of Yellowstone Lake around Mammoth, it looks like. 5.1 kilometers below surface. The Yellowstone overview here shows not a whole... Wow, look at that. Look at that. That's, that's pretty crazy looking, folks. That's an error in the seismograph, no doubt. Obviously, right? Um, 
Yeah, it doesn't look like there was too much earthquake activity prior to this 2.9 jumping up. I am noticing a little earthquake activity on the southern end of the caldera, the Yellowstone caldera. Uh, showed up over here as well. That's just going to be this little earthquake that struck a couple hours ago. The 2.9 that just hit right now has not shown up on these graphs yet. Probably will in a couple minutes after a, uh, a time update and refresh. So we'll see uh, if this turns into a, a swarm or not. Just kind of interesting to see that 2.9 pop up out of the blue like that. Uh, let's see. So there's that 2.9 up there looking at the all magnitudes. We really haven't seen a whole lot of movement directly into the Yellowstone area. There there's, could be that, eh, there's a little bit more south. That other earthquake I just showed you guys a little bit further south in the park. That's a pretty tiny microquake. But, uh... Definitely a lot of large-scale movement taking place into the region here of the North American continent. I mean, it's obvious, pretty obvious, right? Stretching all the way up here through Montana. So um, be on guard, folks. Friday night, big earthquake. We'll see. Uh, Pacific Northwest, as I mentioned there, kind of kicking off there at the volcanoes a little bit. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, movement. There we go. Still seeing some movement here along the southern end. Of course, yesterday, this is pretty absent. Today, with the earthquake activity along the uh, southern end of the, of the um, Cascadia, mega thrust area, we're seeing some tremor take place down dip, downstream, as well as southern Oregon. That would explain the uh, back building of pressure here in this region, back building of pressure along the uh, major subduction zone, as the, uh, uh, such as the Cascadia, is not good continuing to build up pressure and one day will release in a mega quake uh, 9.0 or greater. Let's check out the volcanic seismicity at Mount St. Helens since we did see a little bit of earthquake activity uh, kicking up here. Just uh, a whole lot of movement folks. De definitely uh, worth noting. Not anything major yet. But it's worthwhile to mention all the microquakes and whatnot taking place. There's a uh, localized earthquake there at Mount St. Helens. Some of this other activity uh, doesn't... Uh, it looks like some, some type of movement, some type of quake activity. But very, very small movement there in that region. Uh, Mount Rainier, let's check this out here real quick. Yeah, a little, a little activity as well. Check that out. Image, image not found, not found. See if we can get some of these other stations to kick up. Nope, 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 nope. <whistles> do, 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 do. See if we can get this other seismograph to kick up. Let's see here. Are we going to get it? Is it going to work? Yeah, a little bit of activity, right? I'd say. At least according to this map here. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. I think, uh, man, I tell you what, there's just... We got Yellowstone kicking off, some earthquake activity. Hawaii kicking off. A pretty good size, well, moderate earthquake out there around New Zealand and to the, uh, close to the Hikurangi subduction zone. Pretty quiet through the Japan area. Absolutely quiet through the South America region. Um, wow. Alaska still kind of swarming or uh, kicking off some aftershocks up there around the uh, area where that big one struck a few weeks ago. Not a whole lot of movement through the eastern part of the country. Oklahoma, Pecos, Texas getting in on some action. This has been watching this pretty closely. We've been seeing a good ramp up of earthquakes in this region, about five, six kilometers or so. Most of most of this activity around. Um, in injection wells, fracking up, you know, fracking operations and whatnot. Uh, but this is this has been kind of consistent within this area, and there's not a whole lot out there, folks. If you look at the uh, overview of the map and to the satellite imagery, um, you know, there's some oper There's definitely some pumping operations out there. You can see those uh, the ponds and whatnot that deal with the uh, the wastewater. Uh, but this activity kind of occurring just just over here to the west by oh, a few th maybe a couple thousand feet in this region a couple other ones kind of hiding out here as well so just kind of watching it folks 
we start seeing these things collapse and, and create earthquakes, obviously it's a sign of uh, some good pressure building out here along the North American continent. Uh, squeezing up here. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Have a good night. Uh, there's a whole lot going on. There's definitely a whole lot going on on this Friday night. Hope everyone stays safe out there for the holiday weekend. Um, FYI, folks, I am going to be covering the fire up in the South Lake Tahoe area tomorrow. Me and my co-partner, Missy Mimis, will be traveling to Lake Tahoe early in the morning. And we will be live streaming from South Lake Tahoe, uh, which is under, I still believe it's under a uh, uh, evacuation order. We'll be up there covering the fire um, as journalists and covering the uh, covering what's going on up there. So look forward to that. Um, if I don't have service, and I'll have to do a video when I do have service, but uh, look for the potential to be, be uh, live from South Lake Tahoe California um, tomorrow so just just a heads up all right guys have a good night stay safe out there we will chat at you guys another time have a good weekend